Okay, uh, hi again, Year 9. The purpose of this second video is to talk about the way that the body defends itself against the germs and the pathogens that we're exposed to every day. Uh, the body does this in uh, three ways. The first and second lines of defense are, are the topic of this video, and the third line of defense is the topic of tomorrow's video. Now, the body's first line of defense against germs is just to prevent them from en entering the body in the first place. We have tears that flush our eyes clean, uh, and that will mean that if we uh, if we're crying out any dust or dirt that gets in our eyes, we'll carry that will carry the pathogens away with it. The hairs that are uh, in our noses trap the pathogens and stop them from getting in. We cough and sneeze and vomit to expel any pathogens that have managed to get in. Uh, and probably most importantly uh, is our skin. Our skin is just a tough uh, outer layer of really tightly packed cells that will uh, stop the pathogens from ever getting in in the first place. Uh, we have acid in our stomach and in our urine that will kill pathogens uh, and not allow them to reproduce and cause infections. And we have mucous membranes. These are membranes that produce mucus. And mucus is a thick sticky substance um, and it the um, it traps the germs that do manage to um, to get across those membranes or onto those membranes they get trapped uh, in the mucus and not able to travel any further and then the cells that make up these membranes have tiny little hairs microscopic hairs that are called cilia and the cilia sweep away a little bit like a broom they sweep the the mucus uh, away and that will carry the pathogens out with it. So that's the first line of defense. Now, if a pathogen actually makes it through that first line of defense, the body has a second line. And the second line of defense has two parts. The first part is inflammation and the second part is called phagocytosis. And we're going to talk about that one in a minute. So first of all, starting with inflammation. Um, the body protects itself by increasing the blood flow out to the infected location. That increased volume of blood will bring more white blood cells uh, that can then enter the infected area. The, there are dozens of kinds of white blood cells. Uh, these first ones that are responding belong to a group of white blood cells called phagocytes. Uh, and examples of phagocytes include neutrophils and macrophages. And when you're uh, doing some work around this subject, you might see those two words. Uh, this is an example of uh, an infected uh, sore uh, that is inflamed. So you can see uh, around the site of the infection, the skin is quite red and swollen. And in fact, in some cases, it even looks black. That's because it's so red that it actually looks black. And that's because of all the extra blood in the area. Now, phagocytosis is what we call the process where a white blood cell, remember called a phagocyte, engulfs a bacterium and pulls it inside of itself and then gobbles it up and destroys it. There are two examples of phagocytes that you may see when you're doing some classwork and some reading, and those include neutrophils and macrophages, but they work the same way. Again, the process is called phagocytosis, and that's where a phagocyte moves around a foreign material like a bacterium or a virus and pulls it inside of, its, of itself, inside of that white blood cell, and then breaks it down and kills it. This is a little cartoon of how that works. You can see the phagocyte approaches the pathogen and then uh, spreads the cell membrane out around that pathogen to trap it, and then it pulls it inside, and then it eats it. Now, the body's third line of defense is called the immune response. And remember that that will be the topic of tomorrow's video. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in class.